Hello, I'm Josh, KM4AZW, and today I'm going to introduce you to the most inexpensive way to get involved in the WinLink messaging system. WinLink allows radio operators to send and receive messages in a familiar email-like fashion. Messages are sent from a computer over a radio to a gateway where the messages are forwarded through the internet and held on a number of servers around the world. The messages can be delivered to other ham operators or to a traditional email address. In the past, a terminal node controller or TNC was required to make the connection between a computer and the transceiver. While many radio operators choose to use this route, we now have a cheaper way. By utilizing the processing power of a modern computer with a sound card and a simple sound card interface, we can skip the expensive TNC. The EasyDigi sound card interface is an easy project to build. You can purchase a kit on eBay for as little as $12. The kit includes a small printed circuit board and all the components necessary to complete the basic interface. You also get detailed instructions and even enough solder to get everything attached. Once the board is completed, you will need some additional materials to construct the cabling necessary to connect the interface to your computer and radio. I found a project box that fit the board almost perfectly. I did have to clip the corners off the board to make it fit. I also purchased some 3.5mm audio plugs, a Panamount RJ45 jack, and a DB9 serial cable. I already had some stranded Cat5 cable and RJ45 connectors laying around. If you need more details on finishing up the EasyDigi interface, please visit my blog at www.truhamfashion.com and you'll find a link to uh, the article that I published for uh, finishing the EasyDigi kit. Before downloading any software, it's a good idea to make sure your computer is set up correctly. The only setting we're concerned about today are sound settings, so right click on the speaker icon in the taskbar and select sounds. From here you'll want to make sure that you have uh, no sounds selected for the system sounds tab and hit apply. Go to your recording tab and ensure that your recording device is set to 100% but with no boost. Next, go to Playback and select the port your EasyDigi is attached to and go to Properties. And I usually like to set my level to 30. You may need to experiment with different volumes to drive the device correctly. The first piece of software we need is the UZ7HO sound modem. This is a free software application that directly replaces the old-fashioned hardware TNC. You download the program as a zip archive. Once the download's finished, you'll want to extract the zip archive. We'll just extract it to the same directory we downloaded it. Go into the Sound Modem 95 folder and run the Sound Modem executable file. From here, you'll want to go into Settings and Devices and ensure that the output and input devices are the ones associated with your EasyDigi. Select Color Waterfall and enable the KISS server port. Then select the Push to Talk serial port that's associated with your EasyDigi. Now you'll have to restart the application. Go back into settings and go to modems, and the only thing you need to change is the mode. Switch it to VHF 1200 baud. Now turn on your radio, and everything hooked, with everything hooked up correctly, you should be able to turn up the volume until you get a nice color on the waterfall. I usually aim for mostly green with a little bit of yellow. One Link Express, or as it was previously known as RMS Express, is the application that is used to send and receive messages. This is a free download from the winlink.org site. Under the Client Software section of the site, you can select WinLink Express to download the application. It also downloads as a zip archive and needs to be extracted. Once it's extracted, you can run the installer. Once you run the program for the first time, you'll be presented with the initial settings. You'll want to fill in your call sign 
and your WinLink password. If you need a password, instructions on obtaining one can be found at the winlink.org site. You want to fill in your grid square, and if you wish, you can fill in all the optional contact information. Then click Update. You may then see a registration dialog box. You don't have to register the application to use it, and can just click Remind Me Later. If you have ever used an email client before, WinLink Express will be very familiar to you. In this example, we will be sending a message to check into the weekly WinLink Net. To create a message, click on the New Message button at the top. Fill in the To field with a call sign or an email address you want to send a message to. Add a subject and write your message. When you're done, click on Post to Outbox. Then you will need to ensure that Packet WinLink is the selected method for you to connect. Click on Open Session to start the Packet WinLink session. If you entered your grid square in the settings, the program can automatically look up the closest packet WinLink station to you. Today, we're going to use the K4EMH gateway. Make sure your transceiver is set to the correct frequency, then click Start. WinLink Express will use the sound modem software as the TNC to connect to the gateway and send the message. Once the session disconnects, you can exit the session. Receiving a message works the same as sending a message. You'll want to set your mode to packet WinLink and click on Session. You'll choose your WinLink gateway you wish to connect to, and then you'll click Start. WinLink Express will communicate with the sound modem software, which in turn uses the radio to access the gateway. Any messages that are found on the server will be downloaded. Looks like I have two messages today. Once the messages have been downloaded and the session disconnects, you may exit the packet session window and view your messages. As you can see, it doesn't take a lot to get involved in the WinLink messaging system. Just a little time building a simple kit combined with some free software, and you will have a reliable, error-free way to send messages over Radio Link. You may also like to note that the Easy Digi Kit built in this tutorial is also a good interface to work other digital modes as well. For example, if connected to an HF transceiver, you can work all the major digital modes like PSK31, RIDI, FSQ, JT65, and you can even access WinLink using the WinMore protocol, but we'll save that for another tutorial. Thanks for viewing, and if you would like to see more details on this topic or other radio-related projects and tutorials, take a look at my website at www.truehamfashion.com.